Okay, folks, so here we are again. It's actually been a couple of days since I um, started this video. And what happened was, um, you know, it got late that day. It was real windy, and I wasn't able to finish. And yesterday I went out and I got some um, wood glue. It's, it was clear wood glue that's supposed to set up in 30 minutes. It was kind of like super glue for wood. And I put it down here where this was separating. And I clamped it with my trusty DeWalt clamp. Um, so I clamped it overnight. It was supposed to set up in 30 minutes. And after like an hour and a half, it was still very wet. And this morning even, it was kind of tacky. See where that little ripped off spot is? That's where... I touched it this morning, it was still very gummy and stuck to my hand uh, like super glue does. So I decided um, I'd let it sit out here in the sun for a while. So now um, it seems to be pretty solid. This is not moving at all. So the glue did do its job. Uh, I don't have to put any more nail holes in this or anything. Um, and what I'm gonna do is take this tap, tack cloth Wipe it down, get any remaining dust off here. Um, a little schmegma there, and there's some sanding dust and some actually rabbit wool on here because this is the same table I groomed the rabbits on, and I'm gonna have to make sure I get it clear of all that before I stain. And I have my can of stain out here, and what I like to stain with are staining pads. I like them better than a brush. Um, so I rub it on, it doesn't drip everywhere, it, um, it, it sinks in smoothly, it applies smoothly. It's really good if you're using Danish oil, which I love to stain with, but I'm not using that this time. I'm using my, um, I'm trying the Varathane brand of wood stain. Um, usually I use Min Wax, but I'm trying this one. It's the natural, and I like the way the sample color looked better than the Min Wax natural. So we'll see how it comes out. Now, just a little update. The joke's kind of on me because I did look up what this chair is by the name of the maker, which was uh, William Fetner Inc. And this is a keyhole chair by William Fetner that if I hadn't touched it, I probably could have got 150 bucks for it. But let's be honest, I never would have sold it. I would have just said, yeah, that's my $150 William Fetner keyhole chair. And, uh, you know, but it it looked crummy. Uh, I could have possibly touched it up without removing the finish because there was a lot of paint and stuff on it that had splattered from other people. But uh, they probably didn't know what they had either. So anyway, um, if you see one of these at a yard sale or something, grab it, don't touch it, and put it on eBay. Unless you want to keep it as an heirloom piece. So uh, I've seen them in good shape up to $2.85 on, um, online at specialty shops and stuff. So William Fetner Inc., they made stools, and this is their keyhole chair. And in crappy shape, it's worth about $150. Bucks. Now I'm going to make it my spinning stool, and it'll be worth, I don't know, maybe $50, bucks, but it'll be worth a lot to me because I want to keep it. And... Uh, so that's that. Let me get to it and I'll show you. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this. What a wonderful thing tack cloth is. So it comes in these little, you know, little rag size pieces. And it's got this kind of whack. It feels like it's soaked in beeswax, actually. It's got kind of a greasy feeling to it. And when you wipe things down, it takes everything off. I mean, it looks like even some of the old stain is stuck to this. And... The color is coming off on here and this is you know you want to get the sanding dust and all that off of these things before you apply your finish and I'm wondering if I should go over this with a finer sandpaper before I stain but I, I don't know I kind of like the rough and rustic look on things so I might leave it alone so that's uh, what I wanted to show you anyway with the tack cloth. It's great stuff. Look how dirty looking that is. And it? I mean, this thing didn't look dirty at all when I put it here. It just looked a little like it had a little sanding dust and rabbit wool on it. 
but this is obviously taken off more than that. So I am uh, quite happy with how this is working out with the tack cloth because I usually just do a damp rag and wait forever for the thing to dry out and you know tack cloth is always recommended and I happened to run across it and said let me just finally buy this and make use of it and it's it's making me happy one thing I don't like is through the snot there's a bit of a crack it looks like they try to fill it in with some kind of wood putty at some point maybe back when it was manufactured but anyway here we go all right so that's that and let me uh, wipe any dust off the top of this can of stain and I'm gonna put this camera down for a second and pry this lid open without throwing a screwdriver through my hand I'll be back one thing I want to point out about staining, never ever shake up the can of stain. Never. You stir it if you need to mix it at all. Um, and it's probably a good idea usually to stir it. And I'm just going to use my screw... Um, I'm going to clean off my screwdriver on my shirt. I get on the crappy shirt you'd never want to see today, man. And I'm just going to give this a light, light, light little stir. Sometimes it gets like thick stuff at the bottom, but it doesn't seem to have that problem. As I stirred it, it stirred up really easily. So I'm going to wipe this screwdriver off on my staining pad, because if my husband saw me doing this, he'd freak out. What are you doing to my screwdriver? Okay, now the trick is going to be getting stain from this tiny can onto this big staining pad and I'm wondering if I'm going to be thwarted in my desire to use a staining pad but let's see what we can do I'll get the corner in there we go that's something I'm going to start from the top down the way smart people work so I'm just going to wipe it on Get in here to the keyhole of the keyhole tear and wipe it on top to bottom. I have lots of stain soaked into this pad. It's going to get me a good distance along the chair. All right, so let's see. I'm going to get my hand in the picture here. So, I don't want drip marks, and I don't want missed spots. So I'm going to curl it up and dip again. Looks awful gray for something that's supposed to be natural, but going on like it's not even there it looks just wet so that's what you want with natural one thing I'm not real happy the staining pad seems to be coming apart and leaving lint but I'm going to have faith that that will brush off once this is dry and it's coming out pretty nice it's all going on real easy look at the the color of the wood the green of the wood is really showing all the little uh, character marks are popping which is nice like that always let me get in this key keyhole real good. It's working out pretty nice with the stain pad. I'll go back over the top and just make sure I have it thoroughly soaked with stain but not dripping. We never want drips with stain. Um, 
It's not as bad as with paint, but still not good. All right. And we're going to go over this. One thing I like about the staining pads is you don't get as much dripping like you do with the brushes. You don't get the, um, the bubble up marks. You can get in corners like this pretty good just like you can with any sponge. Always wipe on with the grain because just like with paint you'll end up with if you go against the grain you're going to end up with weird marks and stuff you, it won't look as nice go with the grain and you can see the grain pop it's magical look how pretty it almost looks the color it was before i started stripping it right now while it's wet that's kind of that orangey color it was but you couldn't see the green as much. You could just see, you could see the color more, and and not the wood. The knot showed a little bit, but nothing like this. All right. Another thing with staining pads is it's easy to wipe off excess if you see it, because you do want to do that. You want you don't want to leave. When you put it on, you, if you see little puddly looking marks, you want to go back over and get rid of them before it gets sticky and dry. And get the edges. Wow, that really looks great. It really. I hope the light is showing the grain coming out in this wood that you really couldn't see with the other stain. Even where the dark parts are because of the residue of the old stain, it kind of, like I said, gives, gives it that antique look, which I always enjoy. I don't have this set, the best setup for doing this, so I have to wander around the chair rather than moving the chair around. But, and again, I'm getting some lint probably using the wrong end of this pad. Looks like I'm using where it, apparently I'm using the end where it was sewed together and I bet that's why I'm getting lint because of where it, it's like frayed there. All right, see, so I'm seeing it's after it's sat for a middle, minute it's puddly. So I'm gonna wipe off the excess. And we'll get in the grooves. And I'm going to hit the legs. I want to go under here. Just like when you, uh, for the ladies, when you're putting on your um, makeup foundation and you go under your jaw. Now, I didn't totally strip the underside of this, but I went under a little ways. So you just want to go underneath like you're going under your jaw with the foundation makeup because you don't want that line. That line from makeup to natural that you know looks fake. So now we're gonna go down almost to the ends of the feet. Because I'm trying not to get schmutz from the table onto my staining pad. And right now. I'm doing what I can see. So, let's get a little dunk in here. So, I can't see to the inside of this leg because I'm on the wrong side of the chair for that. So, I do what I can see, which is the outside of the leg. Get, make sure you get in these little divots and flaws. As much as I can see and then when I get to the other side I can make sure I have it perfectly covered now I can see the inside of this leg so I'm going here 
and doing the inside. Now I'll show you later what I'll do about the, the bottoms of the legs because I need to put it everything somewhere where I'm not going to get crud sticking to my um, stain here. You see what I'm doing. It's hard to do this and hold the camera. It'd be really great if my daughter was home to hold it for me, but she's not. And I want to get this done because, oh happy day, my spinning wheel's arriving today. So tomorrow I'll be showing you that, or maybe even tonight I'll film it. And, um... Because I have to stain that before I put it together. I'm going to use the same natural stain, I believe. Because the spinning wheel, I've seen it in pictures and everything, and it's always been in natural colors, and I just like how it looks. I've seen the old, like, Saxony style ones, which are the ones that look like, you know, Sleeping Beauty would have stuck herself on. Those look good in dark wood, but the one I'm getting is a modern style. It's called the Kiwi 2 by Ashford Spinning Wheels, and it's kind of more portable. Again, I'm getting underneath here. more portable than one of the fairy tale spinning wheels and uh, it's great for beginners which I am and so you'll be uh, watching me learn how to spin to start off with and someday hopefully you'll be watching a pro whip up a skein of Angora and other types of wool. What are you doing Sophie? Get out of there. Sophie's found some kind of critter. Last night, um, our friend the Stinky Mouse, he came into the yard and went under the shed over here behind this black barrel. So I hope he left. Sophie, what are you doing? What's under there? Is it a rabbit, a mousy, or a Stinky Mousy? It better not be Stinky Mouse. You better run away. She usually does. She's scared of them because she got skunked last year and it taught her good. So. Um, it's funny how these legs are coming out almost a totally different color than the rest of this. Because this is almost back to the original color it was even though I sanded it down to naked. These legs are way less red. But that's fine. That's what it is. Um, so here we go. What else do I have? So now what I'm going to have to do is put the camera down. And I'm try to put it... Oops. Sorry. Alright. I don't know if you're going to be able to see what I'm doing, because I'm going to tilt this stool a little bit, just lift up, and get the bottom of the leg that's up off the ground, and then set it back down. And I'm touching where it's wet up here, but only a little bit. Going around the bottom, so I'm not going underneath, because there's fuzzy pads on this that I did not take off. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm hoping you can. But I'm lifting the leg up and going around the edge. And the camera keeps tipping over because this is not exactly a tripod situation. So 
that's that. It's pretty much done. It's going to sit and I might put another layer of stain over it. And I might uh, sand it with a little 220 and then put another layer of stain over it. I'm not sure. But for now, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Like I said, it has some dings and character marks and stuff like that. But it's uh, my one hand has stain all over it, so I don't want to touch the camera. But it's looking pretty good. And I'm just going to check underneath and make sure I have everything coated and let it sit out here and dry. And uh, when I have a total finished product, whether I put another coat on or not, I will show it to you all done and finished. Thanks for watching. Okay, it's done. It's all done. The only thing I have left to decide is whether or not I'm going to use polyurethane on this. I'm going to let it dry for a couple of hours. Um, I will wipe it with cheesecloth to make sure there's no excess stain and that it's all completely dry. And uh, I might put a light coat of polyurethane on it just for, you know, because that helps preserve it. But I think I'm pretty happy with the level of stain color I got on here. Um, and if I do polyurethane it, then um, I'll use a satin which is not real shiny because when you use real shiny you have oh my gosh you have to be so careful not to leave any streaks and you have to sand them out and put in extra layers and it's it's difficult to apply and i don't like doing it i don't want to do it so um i will just uh, probably do a satin which doesn't have to be perfect and you can buff it and put a second coat if you feel like it but i think I think one coat of satin would probably be good. What do you think? Pretty nice, huh? Nice little rustic piece of country furniture. So, uh, I just want to say thanks for watching and have a fabulous day. And, um, if I think of anything else that I need to tell you about this chair, I will tell you. But, um, you'll see it again when I set up my spinning wheel and sit on this thing. If my big butt can fit on there. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.